I'm here in Ashton Court Estate just outside of Bristol and I've come to see probably the most famous wildlife autumnal spectacle ever, the deer rat. Oh yes, at this time of year the male red deer stags are pumped full of testosterone, pumped full of sex drive and they will do whatever it takes to gain access to some females. They are literally the most horny animal around. So let's go and find some. Horny, horny. They're not doing it. I don't believe this. For a start, they're miles away. And secondly, they're just sitting around eating grass. Come on, guys. Right, this clearly isn't going to work, is it? I think it's time to change direction. Now, to be honest with you, explaining why the rut happens is a pretty simple question, and I imagine a lot of the people watching this video know the answer. So, let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we, and ask something a little bit more general. Why are there two sexes? <laughs> I just went down a badger set. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter if you're a human or a red deer, you know, an anglerfish or a goliath beetle. There always seems to be two sexes. Why? Why not more? Why not just one? Well, to explain that, we're going to have to go deep into our evolutionary history. I'm going to have to sit down. <laughs> and also, I'm going to have to use some onions that I'm going to use in my chicken gel frazy this evening. Now, firstly, what we've got to do, I guess, is to define what we mean by male and female. Because obviously, if you look across species, males are very different and females are very different. But essentially, all it boils down to is that males produce small gametes, and females produce large gametes. And if that isn't a win for feminism, I don't know what is. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to transport ourselves back to the Precambrian era, where everything was single-celled and sexual reproduction was first evolving. Now, let's go back to basics, shall we? What is sex exactly? All it is is just a fusion of two gametes, right? Sperm, egg, fusing to form a zygote, like that. Now, the larger the size of the zygote, the better, right? The more likely it is to survive, more likely it is to produce an embryo. But we've got something called diminishing returns to factor in. And that is, as the size of the zygote increases, the fitness of it increases, but eventually it will plateau off. Now, life in the Precambrian probably looked a little bit like this. Single-celled, and all those cells are of the same size. Now, in the early stages of sex evolution, it's likely that very small zygotes weren't viable. So that means there was selection for larger gametes. If we had a situation where two large morphs fused, then that will probably produce a very big zygote, and that zygote will probably have a high fitness. If two small gametes fused, that will probably produce not very much at all. Let's say we had a large and a small gamete fusing. That will produce a decent sized zygote, which will probably have quite a high fitness. Now remember, we've got our diminishing returns to factor in. A decent sized zygote isn't that much worse than a big zygote, if we think about this diminishing returns relationship. So it's because of these diminishing returns, the fact that an increase in zygote size beyond a certain point really doesn't make much of a difference. It's that which led to an equilibrium where two gamete types existed, one small and one large. And there you go, sperm and eggs just a matter of size. Now, I've got to be honest, there are other important theories. There's another major one called the Hurst-Hamilton hypothesis, which I haven't had time to talk about, but if you want to know more about it, I've put links 
um, in the description below so you can read more about it. Well, there you go. Every cloud is a silver lining. We may not have seen red deers, locking antlers, you know, blood everywhere, violence, oh, you know, you love that stuff on YouTube, don't you? But instead, we've answered a really, really deep and important question which not many people know about in biology. That fills me with a lot of satisfaction. However, not as much satisfaction as my chicken gel frazy will give me tonight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. God, the onion! Ah, oh, an NGL YouTube. It was delicious.